Here at Square Table Gaming, we do our best to make sure we're paying attention to what our community wants. If you've been subscribed for a while, you know we regularly ask you to share what characters and enemies you'd love to learn more about. Sometimes what happens is that the characters we're researching don't have enough story associated with them to support an entire video on their own. With that in mind, we decided to do something a little different. Welcome to the Tarnished Files, where we're going to dig into some of the Tarnished we've been asked to cover in bite-sized lore segments where we give you as much info as we can based on item descriptions and in-game context. Before we open the Tarnished Files for the first time, we wanted to ask you to take a second and hit that subscribe button. The more viewers subscribe to the channel, the larger we can grow this amazing community. Thank you for sitting down with us and listening to our Elden Ring lore breakdowns. We can't believe how fast we've grown as a channel, and that is all thanks to you. Now, let's get back to the topics at hand. Old Knight Istavan is one of the few wise and tarnished who survive to this day which immediately links him to what is likely the first item we'll find in the game, the Wise and Tarnished Finger. This item is a finger of corpse wax, so emaciated the bone is visible. It is a relic of those who came before, left to help those who would come after. It seems as though the goal of the Wise and Tarnished is to help those in need, and engage in jolly cooperation. Those who did not survive their time in the Lands Between made sure to leave their fingers behind so future generations of Tarnish could help each other achieve their ultimate goal. And it seems Istavan, one of the few survivors, still holds true to his mission. We can summon Istavan to help us at the Coastal Cave where we face the Demi-Human Chief, a tough battle for any new Tarnish to take on alone. Istavan's armor is all scaled, the corroded metal is reinforced with rock-hard scales making it highly effective against non-physical attacks. The age of his armor and the need to reinforce it with scales shows us how long Istavan has been on his journey, and while he doesn't seem to have made much progress, his adaptability is clearly how he's lasted so long in the Lands Between. He wields the Dismounter, a difficult-to-handle weapon that demands much of the wielder's strength and dexterity, but with practice and ability can serve as a versatile weapon even on horseback. He's been training with this sword long enough to wield it effectively, and even uses the Ash of War Gravitas, a skill that thrusts the armament into the ground to create a gravity well. In addition to dealing damage, this attack pulls enemies in. So while he is likely not an Alabaster Lord himself, he has mastered a skill of the Alabaster Lords, likely without their instruction. Old Knight Istvan may not have the charisma of our classic collaborator Solaire, but knowing his mission is to help other Tarnished above all else does make him a friendly face we can depend on. Unfortunately, in order to become Elden Lord, we may have to put an end to our new friend. During the Volcano Manor questline, the first Tarnished we are asked with hunting is Old Knight Istavan himself. Whether we're truly dedicated to the Recusants, or simply using them to get to Rikard's Great Rune, in order to move forward, we have to kill our cooperator. And after researching Istavan, I have to admit, I feel a little worse about it now than I did when I fought him initially. Next, we have Anastasia, Tarnished Eater. This recusant can invade us in three different areas of the Lands Between. Near the smoldering church in Limgrave, as you approach the corpse stench shack in Kaelid, and while exploring the consecrated snowfield. She wears the clothes of a finger maiden which to a desperate Tarnished, brought to the Lands Between Maidenless, may seem like the perfect opportunity to start on the path to becoming Elden Lord. Unfortunately, once they get in close, she reveals her true nature, and attacks with her butchering knife. This weapon's description teaches us everything we need to know about Anastasia. Huge carving knife made to cleanly butcher the human body, signature weapon of the ogress Anastasia, known to have eaten countless Tarnished while disguised as a Finger Maiden. While the name Tarnished Eater may seem like a title representing just how many Tarnished she has slain, it's important to remember that she is a recusant, and we all know how Rikard grows in strength by eating his warriors. It's possible Anastasia is aware that in order to grow stronger, one must literally eat their enemies after defeating them. This gives her title and use of the butchering knife a little more context should it be that she is literally a cannibal. 
For those of you who think this may be an outlandish claim, let's not forget, after we defeat Rygard and return to his throne room, we can find Tanith feasting on his corpse in order to take his power, so that Rygard may live again through her. It's no large jump in logic to say that a tarnished recusant, who goes by the title of Tarnished Eater, may just live up to that name. Just make sure you take out Anastasia fast after she invades you, or you may end up on the menu. Since we just talked about a hunter of Tarnished, let's pivot and discuss a cooperator. Great Horn Tragoth is known as a famed Knight of Assistance who makes his way across the lands between, helping Tarnished to have hit a snag in their adventure. We're even able to summon him for three separate fights, the Draconic Tree Sentinel, the Magma Wirum, Makar, and Star Scourge Radon. His armor description tells us, countless Tarnished facing adversity in the lands between have survived thanks only to the Great Horn One's aid. And the Bull Goat's Talisman tells us, Bull Goats are associated with the stout and mighty Tragoth, said to be unflinching in combat, now a silent comrade to those who fight. Again, we have a Tarnished who has made his top priority helping others reach the throne. Tragoth is so powerful he wields the Giant Crusher, a hammer made from a boulder used in the war against the Giants, one of the heftiest weapons in the entire Lands Between, which speaks to how long Tragoth has been a warrior, dating all the way back to the war against the Giants. This weapon tells us, after the Giants were quelled and man turned against man in violence, this weapon was all but forgotten. Man has grown feeble in comparison to his forebearers. So Tragoth is clearly a powerful Tarnished, preferring to utilize a hefty weapon. Unfortunately again, we are forced to do battle with Tragoth should we follow the Volcano Manor questline. While the recusants of Volcano Manor say they hunt all Tarnished, they certainly have an affinity for attacking those who have made it their mission to help others. Lastly, we wanted to take a look at Mad Tongue Alberic the only Tarnished able to invade you within our version of the Round Table Hold. Should we jump off the balcony, this Tarnished invades, giving us a reverential bow before attacking with his Scythe, Ice Magic, and the heretical Briars of Sin Sorcery. This is a difficult encounter for a new Tarnished, and should we defeat him, we are rewarded with the Taunter's Tongue, which allows your world to be invaded without any Furled Finger cooperators present and it also shortens the interval between windows of opportunity for invasion. The context of who Alberic is, and why he's carrying an item that makes it easier for you to be invaded, isn't discovered until well into Elden Ring, after reaching the version of the Round Table Hold that exists in Landell. After reaching this version of the Hold, we enter to see a corpse sitting below the balcony, and upon inspecting it, we receive Alberic's set. Multiple pieces of this set provide us with the following insights. Set with red glintstones, said to be formed by the blood of sacrifices. Strengthens thorn sorcery. Alberic was an aloof yet disturbed heretical sorcerer, said to have been driven mad by jeering tongues during his service to the Round Table Hold long ago. There are a couple of different ways to interpret the jeering tongues driving him mad. One line of thought is very literal. Due to his dalliances and heretical sorceries, he was looked down on by other Tarnished of the Hold, and constantly berated for dabbling in arts forbidden by the Golden Order. This would lead him to start invading other Tarnished worlds. Another thought could be that the jeering tongues were a symptom of learning his heretical sorceries. Perhaps learning these aberrant sorceries had an effect on Alberic's mind, and the jeering tongues were all in his head. We think it's clear to see that the Taunter's Tongue dropped after defeating him is his own, and the little power it has left draws invaders to our world. We hope you enjoyed this dive into the Tarnished Files, a look at NPCs that are of great interest, but may not have enough lore on their own to support a long-form video. Be sure to comment with any other Tarnished you want to know the backgrounds of, and we'll see if there's enough information to make them into their own video. If not, they'll be added to the next round of the Tarnished Files. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss out on any Square Table Gaming content. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.